Hello there, my fellow spice addicts, and welcome back to some more Dune lore. After making the short overview on Leto II a couple of weeks ago, today I will be delivering on the promise I made in that episode. So I'm gonna be narrating to you about the famous Golden Path, that Muad'Dib infamously didn't want to embrace, which in turn kinda made Leto II decide to do it himself. What is the Golden Path and what does it entail? Well, without further ado, let us find out, shall we? In a nutshell, the Golden Path was an expansive, prescient interpretation that was only visible to the Kwisatz Haderach. It foretold of the fluid events of the future, both great and small. More than that though, it was a path through the countless threads of cause and effect which would be encountered by humanity. Although the Bene Gesserit had long anticipated the existence of the Golden Path, the term was first vocalized by Paul Atreides himself, after he defeated the Harkonnens and the Corinos on Arrakis. However, its dilemmas were only apparent to him after he ingested the Water of Life. Even with his powers, Paul would struggle to determine the best path through the maze of decisions presented to him. That was maybe because he was not the ultimate Kwisatz Haderach everyone thought him to be, having been born a generation sooner than the Bene Gesserit had anticipated. It was more likely though that Paul's difficulty with maintaining a clear vision was because of his own emotions. Much like his own father, Paul was always tempted by a simpler life, away from the intrigues and dangers of the prescient vision, from imperial politics and war. He was also continuously haunted by the death of his father, and the manner in which his house was betrayed again and again. However, it could also be that Paul was constricted by his own prophecy. He could not walk the golden path, because he knew it was his son that was destined to do so, not he. Via prescience, Paul Atreides and Leto II foresaw that humanity would end, if they stagnated and stayed confined within the known universe and the class structure of the Imperium. Although the Imperium population was many trillions, the rule of Leto II would prove that humanity was still confined in a space that could be controlled by a single will. Although rarely addressed directly, it was suggested that this lack of exploration and growth would leave humanity vulnerable to being endangered by a single enemy, which could lead to the eventual destruction of the race. And so, the Golden Path relied on two main factors, Leto's Peace and Leto's Breeding Program. Leto's Peace was a restriction in spice production and spice stockpiling, and the terraforming of Arrakis. The terraforming killed the worms, while the lack of spice restricted space travel. Eventually, after centuries of careful and deliberate oppression, Leto II was destined to die and release a new sand trout to begin a new spice cycle. Subsequently, this caused the expansion of the human realm far beyond the boundaries of the known universe, guaranteeing the preservation of humanity in the long term by inducing a massive expansion and diversification of human population, territory, and culture. This was also a teaching moment for humanity, to not trust charismatic leaders that much, and to think more for themselves. The breeding program was an attempt to free humanity from prescient vision, by introducing a gene through Leto's breeding program, which was first realized by Siona Atreides. That was done to prevent anyone from the gene from being hunted by the Great Enemy, and ensuring that a portion of humanity will never perish at the hands of the thinking machines. It also had the effect of making all those possessing the gene free from manipulation by future tyrants, and forces that could understand prescience. That included the guild navigators and the creations of the Bene Gesserit. After Paul's apparent death in the desert of Arrakis, his son Leto, technically at that point the uh, Kwisatz Haderach 2.0, began to see the Golden Path, as did his sister Ganima. But unlike their father, they chose to begin enacting it rather than running away from it. Their ability to see the threads of causality allowed him to adopt his sand trout skin and craft a future in which he became the human sandworm hybrid, the long-lived god emperor. No, not that one. 
In this almost indestructible form, he would have the required time and power to guide humanity as a whole. In the beginning, the Golden Path appeared to culminate in the ascent of the House Atreides, in the Jihad, the spread of Fremen culture, and the terraforming of Arrakis. While Paul turned away from the horror of the intrinsic suffering involved, Leto II saw his role and that his path was ultimately required for humanity's long-term survival. Leto did not rely on prescience though, and only used it when he thought was necessary. While this had turned his father to the desert and his aunt Alia to madness, he would strike a deal with all the personalities in his memory. His sanity and access to infinite memory contingent upon his sacrificing of himself for the golden path. And so, for 3500 years, he used totalitarian, ultimate theocratic tyranny, including breeding programs and genetic manipulation to enforce domestic tranquility. And via the enforced switching of certain gender roles and powers, he maintained an all-female universal military force, known as the Fish Speakers. These were deathly loyal to their godhead, amounting to significant manipulation of humanity's evolution away from traits that led to war and tyrannical organization. With his great Fish Speaker army, he imposed his will throughout human space, maintaining a complete monopoly on the most valued human currency, the Spice Melange. He executed that by eradicating the worm's prior habitat in the terraforming process of Dune, hoarding the remaining spice, and taking control of all known stockpiles on the other planets. As a result, he leveraged the resulting extreme inflation for total political and transport and resource control. Leto would use the extraordinary powers of total human genetic memory, Bene Gesserit knowledge, unlimited enhanced human intelligence, and prescient awareness to guide and manipulate humanity on a continued path away from certain self-destruction. The final component of his plan would be his own death to take the Golden Path even further. First from the chaos of the enormous power vacuum and the scattering following his death, and then eventually via his surviving so-called Pearls of Awareness. He never wanted his plan to stay hidden, and Leto II planned the eventual discovery of his hidden journals intended to detail his reasoning to all future generations. The intention of the path was always to enlighten and mature humanity beyond its worst tendencies, towards stagnation on one end and total chaos on another. Importantly, another main aspect of the Golden Path was preventing humanity from becoming trapped by prescient prophecy. By removing the ability to see into the future from humanity, via extended spice deprivation, as well as by the breeding program which would create a human strain invisible to prophets with prescience via the traits inherited from Siona Atreides, who would then use this ability to slay Leto II himself. Despite the death of the two men who had enforced the Golden Path, its effects and ramifications were still felt beyond the return of the honored Matres and their eventual merger with the Bene Gesserit. Indeed, the Golden Path saw humanity explode across the universe taking with it what it had known, and returning with knowledge and technology never before encountered. Moreover, the Golden Path saw humanity's physical attributes change, so that their reflexes, nervous responses, and physical movements would be significantly faster and stronger. The effects of Leto's Fish Speaker military and the deprivation of males in the military are unclear. The Fish Speakers apparently became quite irrelevant after the fall of the Tyrant, and the rise of awareness through Shiana. As a lesson in unintended consequences, enemies like the Honored Matres would form in the scattering with ambitions of their own. Regarding the mysterious Great Enemy that threatened humanity in Leto's visions, we do not know much. Frank Herbert himself only makes vague references to visions of the future, time strands seen by Paul and Leto II. These visions are many. In one, humans are running away from machines, possibly of Ixian manufacture, which were designed solely to seek out and destroy human life, and they were equipped themselves with prescient ability, allowing them to hunt down humans no matter what they did. 
Another theory is the return of ancient artificial intelligent machines, which had been thought to be wiped out during the Great Revolt. A future containing that fate would be of the type that would compel a prescient Leto II to take humanity down the golden path. Yet another possibility is that the great enemy was in fact an alien race, coming from another galaxy or even another dimension. The return of the machines would also be reminiscent of the Butlerian Jihad itself. That would imply that humanity is stuck in a cycle of failure, continuously repeating history and its mistakes. Maybe the Golden Path, thus, was a way to break the cycle, by fixing humanity's mistakes via fixing the errors in humanity which led to the mistakes to begin with. And that, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the famous Golden Path that Leto II enacted over more than three millennia for today. A very engaging topic, in my opinion, which we could probably debate for hours if we really set our mind to it. It definitely takes an iron will and self-sacrifice to do all those questionable things and become a tyrant for the sake of humanity. Being a tyrant to prevent any future tyrants. What about you though? What are your thoughts on the golden path? Were you aware of its implications prior to today? Do you think it was the right choice for Leto? Should Muad'Dib have started it instead? Do share your thoughts on the matter in the comments below if you want. If you enjoyed the video or found it informative, please try to support the series. You can do that by watching, liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Thanks for watching, and may the blessings of Shai Hulud be upon you.